we will be honored today to listen to Dr. Hans Theodor Eich. Um, he will be talking mm -hmm. uh, about uh, Hodgkin's lymphoma radiotherapy in the PET CT era. Uh, Professor Eich um, had his training uh, in the as a resident of radiology department in Essen University Hospital. After which he joined the radiation therapy at University of Cologne. And uh, he has been appointed as a professor of radiation therapy since 2006. Um, he had presented uh, several German Hodgkin study group trials in the Astro and the Istro plenary sessions um, in 2005, 2010 for the HD11 trial and uh, in 2019 for the HD16 trial. Also, he is the director of the Radiation Oncology Department at the University Hospital of Munster. Uh, he's a founding member of the International Lymphoma Radiation uh, Oncology Group and the German Lymphoma Alliance and a member of the steering committee. We would be honored um, to hear uh, Hodgkin lymphoma radiotherapy in the PET CT era. Uh, Please proceed, Professor Aish. Yeah, thank you so much for your uh, kind introduction. And uh, also thank you very much, uh, Dr. El Zayat, for the opportunity to present our data here today. Um, Dr. El Zayat uh, suggested as a presentation, Hodgkin lymphoma radiotherapy in the PET-CT era and uh, I'm honored to present the, uh, our data of the German Hodgkin study group. I have no conflicts of interest. In this presentation, I will give you a short information on the background of radiotherapy. Then um, I will present data on early stages and advanced stages of Hodgkin's lymphoma. I will give you um, our perspectives and a so, uh, short summary. The German Hodgkin study group was founded by Professor Volker Diehl more than 30 years ago. Volker Diehl was the chair of the Department of um, Medical Oncology at the University of Cologne. And since then, we have around 20,000 patients in our database. and. Uh, they are ready for evaluation. The German Hodgkin study group is one of the largest study groups um, in this field, and we could define four uh, international accepted risk factors of Hodgkin lymphoma. First, uh, the involvement of three or more lymph node areas. Second, a high ESR level. Third, a large mediastinal mass, which is defined as more than one third of uh, the thoracic diameter in a chest X-ray and uh, extra nodal disease. For example, uh, an involvement of the lung or bone. Radiotherapy changed dramatically during the last decades. We are coming from a definitive radical approach uh, which we call extended field radiotherapy. And this was done <clears throat> at the first time by uh, Henry Kaplan in Stanford, who had the uh, first Linux accelerator available. And he treated with the cold metal field. All the uh, supradiaphragmatic lymph node areas uh, were irradiated. And with this approach, uh, we could achieve complete remissions in more than 95% of all patients. However, around 30% uh, of these patients in early stages developed a relapse. These relapses could be salvaged successfully by chemotherapy. And then um, we introduced uh, the chemotherapy as a first option to treat um, microscopic disease, and then give the radiation therapy. 
in our HD8 trial of the German Hodgkin study group, we compared uh, combined modality treatment in um, intermediate stages. Uh, and in both treatment arms, we um, gave this, the, the same chemotherapy. It was COP-ABVD, and then patients received the standard extended field radiotherapy, and in the experimental arm, uh, involved field radiotherapy. A new um, target volume, which was based on bony structures, and it was a simulator plant. And uh, in this trial, we could show that both uh, treatment fields uh, are equal, also after 10 years. So this was one uh, of the international trials with, which changed um, our, our uh, treatment and it shifted to a combined modality approach with involved field radiotherapy. And now we are talking about involved node or involved site radiotherapy. And I will show you later on what that means. So the German Hodgkin study group uh, differentiates between three risk groups. First, the early favorable stages, then the early unfavorable stages, and the advanced stages. Early favorable means um, an hour stages one and two without the four risk factors, which you see here on the left side. Um, early unfavorable stages are stages one and two, A or B, with risk factors um, beside large mediastinal mass and extra nodal disease. When we have these in patients with uh, stage 2B, we call it advanced stages and we treat them as advanced stages already. Uh, and also all patients with stage three and four are advanced stages in Germany. One of our most important trials in early stages was the HD10 trial. Uh, randomization was in 1998 uh, until 2002. He, he, here we asked, two study questions. First, for medical oncologists, very interesting. What is the adequate number of ABVD cycles? Four versus two ABVDs. And for radiation oncologists, very interesting. What is the um, adequate radiation dose? 30 or only 20 gray involved feed. And all patients uh, received involved field radiotherapy and radiation oncologists ca came from extended fields. So it was very um, interesting to show if uh, the radiation oncologists follow our suggestions to give involved field and only 20 gray. But this was accepted uh, also by all, by the whole um, um, uh, um, medical and also a radiation oncologist group here in Germany. And probably you know um, the results. Uh, there's no difference between four or two cycles of ABVD and no difference between 30 versus 20 gray in both field. And here you see the, the weakest and the strongest arm, four ABVD plus 30, uh, versus two ABVD plus 20 gray involved field, no differences. And with this trial, we uh, could uh, define a new international standard, only two ABVD cycles plus 20 gray radiotherapy, and it remains the standard uh, of care here in Germany and Europe for these patients. I will show you later on. The follow-up trial was the HD13 trial. Uh, here, the study question was to evaluate the ABVD regimen. We took as a standard two ABVD plus 30 gray in both field, uh, and then we switched to 20 gray when uh, the final analysis of HD10, which I just showed you, uh, was, uh, was available. So we evaluated in the experimental arms 
ABV versus AVD versus AV. And uh, here you see uh, the four uh, curves of the treatment arms and progression-free survival. And the treatment arms uh, with, without the D, without the dark cover sign, had a worse prognosis in PFS. So these two curves, uh, overall survival is equal. Now we change to the early unfavorable stages. Parallel to HD10, we conducted the HD11 trial, also 1998-2002 randomization. Here we, we, here we could um, randomize more than 1,200 patients. And as a standard uh, treatment, we had four ABVD as the international standard for these patients. And we compared it with four cycles BCOP baseline. BCOP a regimen what, what, that was very successful in the advanced stages. And Professor Deal um, could publish it in, it in the New England Journal of Medicine, uh, the HD9 trial. With this approach in advanced stages, we saw um, a, um, a better prognosis in overall survival uh, since a very long time for advanced stages. So we wanted to introduce this BCOP schema in the early unfavorable stages. And then the same question we in HD10, what are the adequate radiation dose? 30 versus 20 gray in both feet, radiotherapy in both feet, the first time for all patients. Here you can see the overall survival for all four treatment arms, no differences. And here you see the freedom from treatment failure. And one treatment arm is <coughs> uh, not so good as the the other three treatment arms, it is the weakest arm with four ABVD plus only 20 gray. So we followed as a result, less therapy is possible, but not for all patients. And 30 gray is still the standard um, for radiation oncologists in the intermediate stages. The follow-up trial was the HD14 trial. I don't show it today because Professor Engert will also have a talk uh, in some weeks and he will um, talk about chemotherapy. Uh, but I will, uh, I will uh, stress that two BCOP escalated plus two ABVD was the best treatment arm uh, in this HD14 trial compared with the standard 4 ABVD. So we um, changed our policy and have a new uh, standard in our group, two big up escalation plus two ABVD as a standard treatment for intermediate stage Hodgkin lymphoma plus 30 gray. Now we have the PET um, option in our uh, in our hands and uh, in Germany we did the HD16 and HD17 trial. But with this tool we want to prove if there is an escalation or de-escalation of a combined modality treatment possible and one of the first trials was the, was the EOITC GLA trial, H10 trial. Um, it's a, <laughs> a little bit complicated design. H10 favorable and H10 unfavorable stages. All patients begin with two cycles ABVD. Then there is a PET scan for all patients. In the standard arm, we have one additional cycle ABVD plus 30 to 36 gray involved node radiotherapy. And for intermediate stage patients, here we have two additional cycles ABVD as a standard plus 30 to 36 gray. Then we have the experimental arms. Here we stratify according to the PET result. 
had negative patients received in age 10 favorable two additional cycles ABVD, also altogether four cycles ABVD only without radiotherapy. And had positive patients were escalated, they achieved two further BCOP escalation trial um, cycles plus 30 to 36 involved node radiotherapy. And uh, the unfavorable patients here uh, had negative patients received six cycles ABVD without radiotherapy, had positive patients were escalated with two peak of escalation plus 30 to 36 gray. And the data safety monitor board stopped the treatment arms without the radiotherapy earlier because there were more events I show you here. So here, here is the experimental arm, and we see more events in uh, the treatment arms without the radiotherapy. Parallel to the URTC, the United Kingdom rapid trial was conducted, and they gave three cycles ABVD in early stages, and then patients received a PET scan. Had positive patients received uh, four cycles of ABVD and then 30 gray involved feed radiotherapy. Had negative patients were randomized between 30 gray involved feed versus no further treatment, a de escalation of the whole um, treatment. And here you see the results published in the New England Journal. And you see that patients with a combined modality approach had a better progression-free survival uh, as patients uh, with chemo only. There is no difference um, between the treatment arms in um, overall survival. So I would like uh, to conclude for these very interesting and very important trials. Uh, a central PET review was necessary. They had a panel which um, evaluated the whole diagnostic imaging. We had more events in PET negative patients with chemo only. Both trials had similar findings but opposite conclusions. 8 versus 20 and 8 versus 25 events between rapid and H10. And the rapid trial failed to demonstrate non-inferiority with progression-free survival differences up to 8.8 .8 in ITT and 11% in the PEP protocol analysis. So what did we do in Germany? The HD16 trial for the early favorable stages. We have the standard arm according to HD10. Uh, two cycles ABVD, then a PET, and all patients received 20 grain wolf feed. Then we have the PET guided arm. Here we differentiated between patients who were PET negative, they were only followed up without further radiotherapy, and the PET positive patients who received 20 grain wolf feed. The primary objectives were first. Can radiotherapy be omitted from standard combined modality treatment without a relevant loss of tumor control in PET2 negative patients? And second, does a positive PET after 2 ABVD represent a risk factor for PFS among patients treated with standard combined modality treatment? Here you see the progressions and relapses uh, between PET negative patients with combined modality treatment, 328 patients, and 300 patients who were treated with 2-ABVD alone. We see more events in uh, the chemo-only group. And here you see the progression-free survival rates, uh, comparison between PET-negative patients and PET-positive patients, a difference of 12.2% between these two patient groups 
no difference in overall survival. And now the radiotherapy question. Here you see the combined modality treatment group 2 ABVD plus 20 gray versus 2 ABVD, ABVD alone in pet negative patients and a difference of 7.3%, no difference in overall survival. So a no radiotherapy approach is associated with inferior progression-free survival. Parallel to HT16, we conducted the HT17 trial for early unfavorable status. Here we have our new um, standard treatment, two cycles decom escalated plus two ABVD as our standard uh, chemotherapy approach in Germany. And then all patients received a PET scan. PET positive patients were all irradiated and uh, they were randomized between involved field radiotherapy and involved node radiotherapy. For radiation oncology, it's very interesting because this is the only international trial where these two target volume de uh, definitions are uh, proved in a prospective manner. But I cannot um, show you the results today. It's not, uh, uh, it's not ready. So we just um, write a publication on this. And we have the PET negative patients. Here we differentiate between 30 gray in both field and uh, we um, have no further radiotherapy, only follow up, also de-escalation de of the of uh, the whole treatment. And here you see the results. The standard combined modality approach versus the PET4 guided treatment group, no difference uh, in PFS. And when we look to only to the PET negative patients, no differences between combined modality treatment and chemo only. So for this trial, we can say a de-escalation is possible for PET negative patients. Here, uh, consolidative radiotherapy is not necessary. Now uh, we would like to uh, switch to the advanced stages. The role of radiotherapy in the advanced stages is a discussed controversial. In Germany, we treated before the PET era um, uh, based on CT scans, and we treated um, residual tumors after chemotherapy with additive radiotherapy 30 gray, according to our HD12 trial. And uh, since we have the PET scan in Germany available, we did the HD15 trial, and here we had uh, the result patients with a PET positive residual tumor after BCOP chemotherapy should receive additional radiotherapy of 30 gray. And with this approach, they have very good prognosis. Today, I would like to show you the HD18 trial. Also, uh, medical oncologists have a strong um, yeah, wish to de-escalate uh, also the chemotherapy approach. They start with two BCOP escalated. Then we had the PET central review of all imaging. And then PET positive patients were all uh, treated with additional uh, BCOP uh, cycles, altogether six cycles. And um, then during uh, the trial, we reduced to, uh, six, to uh, in summary, six cycles uh, BCOP when we had our um, final results of HD15 um, available. So you have to take in mind that all studies, uh, are, uh, that we also always um, wait for um, 
our uh, results and then we switch uh, in the next study generation to these new results but uh, there's so much pressure with the patient that we have to do one um, clinical trial after uh, the next one okay and the pet negative patients here we only treated with additional two cycle peak of escalation uh, versus the standard six. So PET negative patients uh, received only four cycles uh, BCOP escalated in this trial. And radiotherapy was applied in PET positive residual tumors. Here you see the results published in Lancet uh, 2017. No difference in these PET negative patients when you uh, look at these patients no differences uh, between eight or six cycles BCOP escalated versus only four cycles BCOP escalated. So a very strong uh, de-escalation of uh, chemotherapy for these advanced patients. Now I would like to, to show you one uh, US trial, the Echelon trial, uh, it's a no radiotherapy trial, but uh, very interesting. Um, in the US, they, all, uh, they often give uh, ABBD six cycles in these um, advanced patients. In Europe, we do BCOP. Uh, and they uh, included and introduced brentuximab, vidutin, an antibody drug conjugate in this um, ABD schema uh, in stage three and four patients. Uh, and what you see is that the immunochemotherapy approach is better in PFS uh, compared to the um, chemo only and standard chemotherapy group. However, um, grade uh, three and four toxicities were uh, higher in this uh, immunochemotherapy approach, especially neutropenia and uh, polyneuropathy after three years. And what did we do in Germany? We also introduced brentuximab, vidutin, uh, in our BCOP schema, and Professor Engert will uh, tell you in some weeks uh, the details but um, I would like to show you the whole thing, what, what we do. Uh, and I don't um, show any results today, but uh, Andreas will show you. And here we differentiate between the standard six decop escalated versus six Brecat uh, cycles. And radiotherapy is the same uh, we uh, treat patients with a pet positive residual tumor. So I would like to summar uh, summarize uh, our um, results uh, in the advanced stages. In, in Germany, we give four to six cycles a week of escalated in these advanced stage patients, and we stratify after PET2. We integrate modern substances Brentuximab and checkpoint inhibitors, and radiotherapy is given in PET positive residual tumors, which are um, larger than 1.5 centimeter. Immunotherapy, not only uh, this <coughs> CD30 antibody, also um, nivolumab and bembrolizumab uh, are changing the whole treatment and um, ongoing, we uh, introduce these drugs also in our um, primary treatment. And we did the NIVAL trial, um, the HD20 pilot trial. And here we introduced um, nivolumab uh, in this trial with 100 patients um, in one treatment arm, we gave uh, the checkpoint inhibitor simultaneously to 
the four cycles A, B, A, B, D, and in arm B, we began with uh, the checkpoint inhibitor four times, and then we compare it, so a sequential approach. And all patients received 30 gray in both side radiotherapy after the, the systemic treatment. And here are the results uh, published in JAMA last year. No differences between uh, the treatment arms, no difference between the simultaneous or sequential approach of nivolumab in this context. And we have a very interesting ongoing uh, trial, interesting for radiation oncologists. We would like to uh, evaluate the abscopal effect of radiotherapy in relapsed or refractory Hodgkin lymphoma. Patients should have at least two lesions or more and they are treated uh, with 20 gray local radiotherapy on this lesion. And parallel, they get a um, checkpoint inhibitor. Uh, and we are searching for the abscopal effect of radiotherapy. Now, I would like to show you one example of target delineation um, of involved site radiotherapy. And um, as I showed you already, we are coming from extended field radiotherapy. This treatment is uh, not done anymore. Uh, we uh, never treat with radiotherapy alone with these large fields. But we uh, did involve field radiotherapy in our HD 16 and 17 trials. And now we treat with involved node radiotherapy or involved site radiotherapy. Involved node was first described by Theo Gerinsky. He is a radiation oncologist uh, at Villejuif in Paris, and he published his definition for the EORTC in the Green Journal. And uh, this definition is based on an initial PET-CT. However, in Germany, we have no initial PET-CT available for all patients. Thus, we needed a more generous um, definition of involved node radiotherapy with the broader margins. And thus, um, we defined it in our society and we call that modified involved node radiotherapy. And after that, the, um, the International Lymphoma Radiation Oncology Group we did a consensus paper and uh, defined involved site radiotherapy, which is very close to our definition in Germany. And I will show you one example <clears throat> out of this publication in the Red Journal. This uh, publication is one of the most downloaded papers in the Red Journal since its publication in 2014. So here you see a PET-CT of a Hodgkin lymphoma patient with a, a mediastinal mass, PET-positive, and in radiation oncology, we delineate this uh, PET-positive um, mass. We call that gross tumor volume, GTV. Then we fuse this PET-CT with our um, CT scan, and uh, we have um, two um, structures delineated. First, the uh, red PTV uh, based on PET, and we have uh, this blue uh, GTV based on CT. And um, when we fuse these images, we have this in yellow. Uh, this is our GTV, okay? After chemotherapy, we have uh, no uh, residual tumor left in this image, uh, and we fuse this structure onto this uh, CT, uh, post chemo C CT uh, um, slice. And then, 
we have this uh, pre-chemo GTV uh, and on a post-chemotherapy CT scan. And then we adapt the clinical target volume and delineate this structure. Uh, we have no residual tumor and we think that we are uh, right when we uh, call this uh, CTV. And after further thinking about the structure, we uh, give a safety margin around that. And this is our PTV, our planning target, five millimeter around this uh, pink CTV structure, okay? So I would like to summarize for this talk. Hodgkin lymphoma has become one of the best curable cancers today. Radiation fields and doses changed dramatically during the last years. We have excellent opportunities in radiation oncology with modern technique, with modern um, diagnostic imaging tools, with um, image-guided radiotherapy and um, intensity modulated radiotherapy. And we changed and came from extended field to involved field and now involved site radiotherapy or involved node radiotherapy when an initial PET CT is available. The standard treatment for early favorable stages is 2 ABVD plus 20 gray involved site radiotherapy uh, according to the HD16 trial. Combined modality treatment is still the standard treatment in Germany. A positive Deauville score of four, I didn't tell you the whole details of PET imaging, but we can discuss it later. Uh, a positive Deauville score of four after two ABVD is associated with significantly poorer progression-free survival compared with the negative PET I showed you. And for early unfavorable stages, we give two big of escalated plus two ABVD as our standard chemotherapy approach, plus still 30 gray in both side radiotherapy. However, in PET positive patients, in PET negative patients, um, we do not treat them according to the HD17 trial. And the advanced stages here, we treat with 30 gray additive radiotherapy in PET po positive residual tumors. We change our strategies and we introduce immunotherapy in our primary treatment and we will compare it and with, with um, chemo and radiotherapy and the combination of these uh, possibilities. And especially for radiotherapy, immunotherapy, is a very good tool to compare and to combine. So I would like to thank the whole group, especially Professor Deal, who is a founding mem member of our uh, international uh, cooperative group. And the last slide shows you uh, the city center of Münster and uh, one of our towers of the uh, University Hospital. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Professor Aish, uh, for your comprehensive presentation on Hodgkin lymphoma. Uh, maybe I can ask you one question. In Egypt, for example, or in many uh, African countries, there don't have uh, pet CT machine in some centers. So in advanced disease, uh, you recommended additive radiotherapy with 30 gray on pet on positive lesions. What can we do if we don't have pet CT in okay. our department? Um, we did uh, the HD12 trial where we have the chemotherapy uh, become escalated. And here we also had a radiotherapy question. And there was a randomization uh, for radiotherapy uh, with or without radiotherapy and radiotherapy was given in, at the initial bulky tumor and residual tumor. And this was, was without PET. 
And uh, Peter Borchmann, one of our medical oncologists, published the, uh, the results in the GCO. And what we can say is that the radiotherapy uh, in a PET, uh, uh, sorry, in a CT residual tumor um, has a better impact on prog progression-free survival. So we would recommend uh, doing radiotherapy on CT residual tumors. Yes, thank you. Mohammed, do you have any comments on this? Yeah, um, I would like to um, to speak a bit about uh, our uh, the setting that we have uh, in Egypt, uh, Professor Khaled and Professor Aish. Uh, well, um, let me tell you that uh, um, the difference um, in the progression-free survival is extremely significant uh, for us in Egypt due to the, the lack of, uh, of readily availability of the transplant as a salvage therapy. So usually in, um, during all the trials of the Hodgkin's disease, um, either in the advanced Hodgkin or even in the early Hodgkin, we, uh, there has been standardization I don't hear um, due to the availability of the high dose chemotherapy and uh, uh, autologous stem cell transplant. But in Egypt, we don't have access for that. Uh, we have very limited access with very limited service of the high dose chemotherapy and the autologous transplant. So basically the progression free survival or the number of events that occur or, the, or differs um, uh, between the different regimens or even in the use of the uh, radiotherapy is extremely important for us. So basically in my practice in the advanced Hodgkin, I, uh, advanced or unfavorable Hodgkin, I use uh, escalated Biacom. Although I come from um, a US training, which they don't use Biacom at all. But for us in Egypt, Biacom is extremely powerful tool to be used in the advanced Hodgkin. And we even use it uh, despite uh, the adverse events that occurs with it from myelotoxicity or the incidence of AML and uh, the gonadotoxicity, but I still use it because of the difference in the progression-free survival. Also for the radiotherapy, um, I'm, I'm actually against the, the omission of the radiotherapy for the same reason um, which is basically the ability to salvage uh, patients and even the exposure of them for the autologous transplant as it also has uh, um, uh, myelotoxicity and gonadotoxicity for these very good prognosis patients. Um, and we never want to, uh, uh, we also want to minimize the side effects, but we want to preserve their lives. So um, um, uh, I'm, I'm really for radiotherapy and I'm ready for uh, the use of Biacob uh, uh, in, the, in the advanced Hodgkin. And this is my take on, on, on uh, the Hodgkin uh, disease. Yeah, thank you very much. <clears throat> I would, would follow you. And uh, you know, there is a battle between medical oncologists in, in Europe and the US, uh, what should be done, Biacob or ABVD. Uh, are also in Canada, but um, the results are very good with the BCOP uh, and um, side effects. Uh, there are more side effects we know, but uh, for us, also for Khaled and me, uh, the primary treatment is always uh, the most important thing. Um, so it, that, that that the patients are cured in the first treatment option, and when they when they need when they need um, salvage treatment, uh, it is very intensive for them, and uh, it's a problem uh, in the whole uh, treatment burden for them. So you're thinking it's, it's for me it's correct. Probably some <laughs> colleagues in Germany. They would say it's not very differentiated, but uh, 
I have uh, I have a patient here, a, a medical student, seen. Um, uh, he was treated with um, analog analogous to to HD18 with uh, with an advanced stage Hodgkin's lymphoma, uh, awful medical bulky tumors in the mediastinum, and he received only four cycles of uh, BCOP escalated and uh, nothing else. And the tumor conference uh, recommended no further treatment, no radiotherapy. Yeah, we have these, uh, these results available, but <laughs> I wasn't asked. And I, uh, now uh, the patient three months after finishing chemotherapy, has a, he has a relapse in the mediastinum and I, I um, sent uh, the, all the images uh, to my colleagues in Cologne, and we uh, would have uh, uh, we would uh, recommend to treat these patients with a very large uh, tumor, uh, also um, a CT morphological tumor after uh, chemotherapy, and there are always also in these studies patients. Uh, individual patients who got the radiotherapy when they had a very large mediastinal mass. But this young guy, and now he, he gets uh, uh, DHAP and then uh, he will get um, stem cell transplantation and it's, it's awful. So I would follow what you, you said. Thank you, Professor Aish. I think um, there is no other questions. Uh, our colleagues, please feel free to ask any question before we close. Uh, I will summarize before we close. Uh, let me just summarize the main points uh, today. We discussed the role of uh, radiotherapy in early stages uh, and advanced stages of Hodgkin lymphoma. Uh, Professor Aish talked about the role of uh, radiotherapy in bit negative patients in early favorable disease and uh, the role of PET-CT in advanced stages. Uh, so if you don't have any question, uh, right, that's all for today's meeting. Thank you again, Professor Aish, for your time and warm greetings from Egypt and see you soon. See you soon and best wishes from Germany to all of you and for especially yeah, yeah and especially to your family, Khaled.